All right, folks, welcome back to Cheddar. Prices for blockchain tokens like Bitcoin uh, and Ether are soaring to all-time highs this week. Uh, demand continues to increase as more companies get on board the digital currency trend. People love the digital currency. Joining us now is Luis Coende. He's the co-founder and CEO over at Aragon. And, uh, and he joins us now. It's great to have you. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Okay, so let's give our viewers a little bit of background who are otherwise unfamiliar. What is Aragon all about and the work that you're doing over there? So Aragon is basically a way to run companies that is purely decentralized. So you don't really need like a bank or a government or even like a notary public. You can just run your company, pay people, uh, have accounting, uh, you know, give shares or tokens to other people. That's it. It's a very easy way to run your company on, on the blockchain. So you're talking about a, a different way of measuring companies' valuations than what we usually do, which we look at market cap, we look at maybe their earnings, um, we talk about that in hard dollar kind of amounts. So let's compare, let's say, you know, how would you evaluate Chipotle mm -hmm. through Aragon? It's actually very cool because valuing companies in Aragon or in blockchain in general is so open and so liquid. Like normally if you are Uber, for example, you have VCs who are valuing you each round. $70 billion Ubers, mm -hmm, right? right? So yeah. what and, would be its value in Aragon? <laughs> and then like if you're an employee, you cannot even cash out and buy a nice house with that if you're the number one employee. So with Aragon and with tokens and with blockchain, the tokens are out there in the secondary market and people can buy and sell them. I mean, it's just, you know, free capitalism, free market. Uh, if you're an, and if you're an employee, you can buy a nice house and, and liquidate that. Okay, so give us a gauge about other sorts of companies that can benefit directly from the work you guys are doing. Yeah, so I think there are some sorts of, of companies that are purely remote, decentralized. They are, you know, they have employees in many countries in the world. They don't believe in nations, they don't believe in borders. They have like, you know, maybe a lady from Argentina working for, uh, with someone in India or whatever and not caring about walls. So that's the kind of, of organizations that can really benefit from us. Organizations that don't really believe on like, you know, walls, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now you just recently saw the second largest token sale ever, $25 million in 26 minutes. Talk to us about how that came to be. So our token sale, you know, it was a few days ago, um, and it was so crazy. Like the, uh, the second minute, we actually had all the money committed on the blockchain, and we kind of congested the blockchain because, you know, it takes time for transactions to confirm. And so, I mean, it's crazy, and it demonstrates that there is a real interest from people to have organizations, to have companies that are borderless. So where was the interest coming from? I mean, the interest was coming from China, from America, Europe. To be honest, I don't like, we don't like even know who they truly are. They're just people that bought in and we don't even know who they are. That's beautiful. It, it's beautiful, <laughs> but it's also dangerous because we know, let's just say, the WannaCry ransomware attack was enabled purely by this fact that they could get their ransom through Bitcoin, which is fairly untraceable. But what do you say to critics who, who think that this sort of... Um, decentralized currency platform is not good for, let's just say, uh, you know, law and justice abiding citizens. Yeah, I mean, you know, decentralization and freedom comes both ways. So in the case of WannaCry and other ransomware, uh, you know, things are not secure and then there's a way to exploit things and you can get paid in Bitcoin. And I think the outcome of, in, in all of this is that people are going to start figuring out that they have to secure their things. So I don't think it's a problem of like Bitcoin or crypto, it's just that you know, freedom comes both ways. People can use it for bad things or for, for good things, yeah. Luis, pull back the curtain for us a little bit. Give us a look into what the future holds for Aragon. Give us a, paint us a picture for the rest of 2017. Yeah, so I mean, the, the future for Aragon, I think we are seeing this trend of like the world going into hell. We are seeing this trend of, <laughs> of like, you know, Donald Trump. So optimistic. Oh yes, oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> Donald yes. Trump, like, you know, we are gonna build the wall and it's gonna be so huge. Yeah. And then we are on the other that's side. That's a great impression. Then we are on the other side saying, hey man, we don't really care about that. Build your wall. We are making software that will tear your wall down. So we are making that and we think that's the future. The future should not be a planet in which we are discriminated for the country we are born in. Right. It should not be that. Okay, you're very okay. passionate about the fact that it's decentralized and to break down walls. What are the benefits of having this kind of decentralized currency? And I just want to get back to a specific example. So again, let's take Uber, valued at about $70 billion right now. You know, you say that some of the benefits are the tokens can be liquid. Um, if you are a company like Uber and you're a private company, you would actually be, what, paying your employees or giving them options in Aragon? Like, give us an example of how you would mix this type of cryptocurrency into the 
the regular mix of how companies are usually valued. Yeah, so it could be really cool, for example, if Uber issued their own like cryptographic token, and that token would be the currency that you use to pay for, for Uber, for example. So you wouldn't be even like buying Uber search, you could be buying this token that lets you interact with the Uber network. So Uber would not even be a company, it could be a network. And so you could be valued in a more liquid way by the actual market, and I think people here will love that. But then you would say, too, then Facebook could do this, then PayPal could do this. They could all issue their own form of currency, which would then also create a lot of confusion, because then how do you value one currency against the other? You know, we, we, we trade um, currency on the exchanges like this, but it is more regulated. So how would you regulate something like that? And how would I know how much I'm worth in Facebook dollars versus Uber dollars? Yeah, I, I think we are going to live in this real world when we are going to have like 1,000 different tokens for 1,000 different functionalities. And the exchange rate is going to be like, you know, so easy. So you and do we're believe in have... that. You do believe in the future where it could be a thousand different kinds of currencies. Totally. And then we have exchanges like, you know, like we are in right now or different digital exchanges that we kind of change things without even noticing. Right. And you think that's a good thing? That's a good thing. You know, it's capitalism. It's actually, you know, fair capitalism. It's more efficient capitalism. So I think that helps make the world a more fair place. Why, why, yeah, why, is it more, why is it more efficient? Because you don't have a lot of intermediaries like governments, banks, uh, notary publics, you know, these kind of people that actually, they are not needed anymore. They're not, sorry, one more time. They are not needed anymore. They're not needed anymore because yeah. we, we do a lot of trading algorithmically anyway, too. So you would let the computers and the mining kind of process. You can be your own bank. You can be your own. Ah. People. And you can be your own government with Aragon. That's also. That's what cool. I'm talking about. Yeah. Actually, let me. The uh, Constitution of JD Durkin. That's what I'm all about. That's pretty cool. Actually, we have a guy who wants to buy an island and govern the island with Aragon. Like, just like, you know, use Aragon to create like sort of government. Nice. Yeah. I like to be his friend. But I, I, I guess I still don't understand. If I have my own currency and JD has his own currency, how will we, again, trade with one another and say, well, you know what, JD, I don't like your currency today. I, I don't want to, I don't think it's worth yeah. as much as, as it was yesterday and to me. So how would that actually get equalized? Yeah. You know, just like it works here. People buy, people sell, people so exchange currencies. It fluctuate all the time. Yeah. Okay. Different know. currencies. All right, it's peeking to the future. Luis Cohen Day, co-founder and CEO over at Aragon, here with us live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. It's great to have you, Luis. Yeah, thanks so much nice for having me. Here. Very sharp that dresser, by the way. That conversation is not over yet, guys. We're going to have to No, no. On. Well, we're definitely got much more in the pipeline. All right, coming up, a firm investing in the growth of ETFs. Not just ETFs themselves, but the growth. But first, some headlines from our friends at Newsy.